Hi, my name is Brittany Ricardo, and I did my law uh, final on the church and state relations. We're going to start with some definitions, um, but first I'm going to start with, according to our text, efforts to determine the proper connection between government and religion have sparked significant debate in our country, with schools serving as a battleground for some of the most contentious debates since the mid-20th century. So the first definition I want to look at is the First Amendment Establishment Clause, and this is used primarily to challenge governmental advancement of religion. And... Um, the next one is the Establishment Clause, which are used in public schools to challenge policies that allegedly promote religion. And lawsuits brought under the Free Exercise Clause usually focus on school policies that allegedly interfere with religious practices. So let's go into some history. The first major establishment clause decision was the Everson versus Board of Education. So in 1947, the Supreme Court reviewed the history of the First Amendment and concluded that the establishment clause means neither a state nor the federal government can set up a church, neither can pass laws that aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion over another. In the words of Jefferson, the clause against the establishment of religion by law was intended to erect a wall of separation between church and state. Some more history is a case called the Lemon versus Kurtzman. And through this case, there became a lemon test. So a little background of the Lemon versus Kurtzman case, uh, a Pennsylvania school um, was given public schools money to private schools. And this money provided financial support for teachers, salaries, textbooks, and instructional material. Now due to this case in 1971, the Supreme Court created a three-part test to determine whether the government acts violated the Establishment Clause. And this test is called the Limit Test. Now, in order for a school to get aid from the government, the money cannot be used for religious purposes, cannot encourage or discourage religion, and cannot entangle the government up in religion. So this Lemon Test is used throughout different court cases. Some facts. Public schools cannot sponsor devotionals, whereas they must allow private religious expression under some circumstances. And students have a free exercise right to engage in private devotional activities in public schools, so long as they do not interfere with regular school activities. Now, the first case I'm going to look at is about silent prayer. Now, this case is called the Wallace v. Jeffrey. And in the 1980s, an Alabama law authorized teachers to conduct regular religious prayer services and activities in the school classrooms during the school day. Now, Mr. Jeffrey, he had three children that attended a public school in Alabama, and he did not agree with his children participating in these religious activities at the school. So he filed a case, and the court concluded that an Alabama statute that authorizes a one-minute period of silence in public schools violated the First Amendment Establishment Clause. The next case I want to look at is the Lee versus Wiseman. This was the first major prayer case. Um, in 1992, a Rhode Island rabbi was to speak at a graduation ceremony where prayer would be offered. The parents of a student did not want the rabbi to speak at his daughter's graduation. So the court struck down the Rhode Island School District policy that permitted principals to invite clergy members to deliver innovations and benedictions at the middle and high school graduation ceremonies. The court said that the students felt peer pressure to participate in these devotions at school sponsored graduations. Now, as a result of this Lee versus Wiseman case, students, churches, and other groups can rent spaces for public school districts to conduct religious services that are not sponsored by the public schools. But employees can participate in these private religious services. And in some districts, graduation ceremonies have been designated a forum for student expression, so students' messages can include religious references and are not subject to review and do not bear the same as private school approval. It all depends on whether the school has created a forum for student expression in the graduation ceremonies or it has retained control over the graduation speeches. The next topic is religious displays in classrooms. Now, there was a case, Stone versus Graham, in 1980. Um, the Supreme Court ruled that a Kentucky law required posting the Ten Commandments on the wall of every public school, which violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment because the purpose of the display was religion. The Lemon Test was used to come to this conclusion. And 
my final question to answer is, can teachers incorporate religion in their classrooms? Teacher activities have been examined to ensure that classrooms are not used to educate religious ideas. And according to our text, teachers deal with a vulnerable, captive audience in public schools. Teachers have been asked to stop leading devotionals in schools by the courts. Teachers should remove religiously oriented books from their classroom, refrain from silent reading of the Bible, stop using religious references when delivering instruction, and remove religious banners from their classroom. So the main point is, is teachers cannot influence their students' religious beliefs, but public school educators do have a constitutional right to their religious belief, but they do not have the right to freely express those beliefs to their students. Now, I learned a lot from this uh, law presentation. Um, it's really hard coming from um, a Christian private school growing up to a public school educator because when students bring up God, you can't really say much. You just have to let your students lead the conversation. Um, but it's interesting to hear the background of um, church versus state.